In this video, we're going to learn how constructors work with inheritance in C++. The first thing we'll do is make a drive class and a base class that both have a default constructor. So we can see how those behave. So we'll make a base class called menu item. And menu item objects are gonna have one public member variable, a string for the name of the menu item. And we're gonna say menu items are gonna be things at like a restaurant. We'll make a default constructor, menu item, that will set name equal to unknown by default. Then we'll make a derived class of menu item called drink. So we'll say class drink colon public menu item. So drink is a derived class that inherits from the base class menu item. And drink objects are gonna have one more public member variable. They're gonna have a number of ounces in the drink. So we'll say double ounces and the default drink constructor is gonna set ounces to eight. So we'll say ounces is equal to eight. Let's see what happens if we try to create a drink object in terms of which constructors are called when. So the first thing we'll do to check that out is actually add some cout statements to each constructor. So we'll say cout base class default constructor and line. And we'll put something very similar in the derived class. We'll say derived class default constructor. And then down here, if we create a drink object instance by saying drink hot chocolate and we save and run this, we find that the base class default constructor runs first, followed by the derived class default constructor, but they both run. Now in the case of a base class menu item object, we're gonna find that only the base class default constructor is going to run. But in the case of that derived class drink, we get that the base class default constructor runs and then the derived class default constructor runs. So that's the behavior we get with default constructors and inheritance. Now what if we had a parameterized constructor in our drive class? So we'll make a parameterized constructor in our derived class. We'll say drink double set ounces and we'll set ounces equal to set ounces. So we now have a parameter in our drive class constructor. So here we'll output drive class param constructor. And we'll create a hot chocolate object here and this time we'll try to use that parameterized constructor so we'll say hot chocolate and we'll give an argument of 20. so if we save run this again we get that the base class default constructor runs first but then our drive class param constructor will run after that and these constructors are basically building our drive class object together now what happens if our base class also has a parameterized constructor we'll try that We'll add a parameterized constructor to menu item. And this constructor is going to accept the name as an argument. And we'll set the name member variable to that argument. And again, we'll also output base class param constructor. Now for now, let's actually just leave everything else alone. We'll leave this as it was before. And we'll leave this instantiation of this drink object the same. And if we save and run our program here, we're gonna find that the base class default constructor runs first, followed by the derived class param constructor. But we might actually want to run the base class's parameterized constructor. How can we do that? We could do that right here by saying colon and then menu item and we could give some argument here for that parameterized constructor. So maybe instead of unknown, we'll say NA for not available, like that. So now if we save and run our program, we're gonna find that we get the base class param constructor running followed by the derived class param constructor. So that base class constructor is still gonna run first. But by saying here colon 
menu item, and then giving our arguments that constructor, we can use that parameterized constructor of the base class. Now, one interesting situation that can come up is if the base class doesn't have a default constructor. Because right here, with our default constructor of our drive class, it's basically implied, it's implicit, that we're gonna call the default constructor of the base class. But what if the base class just doesn't have a default constructor? So we'll actually delete the default constructor of the base class here. And then let's see what happens if we try to instantiate a drink object using the drink objects default constructor. So we'll save this, run it, and this time we get build failed. And if we go up here, we're gonna get an error here. It says constructor for drink must explicitly initialize the base class menu item. So here we actually have to explicitly call menu items parameterized constructor to make this work. So we'll say menu item, and here we could say maybe unknown. And we'll save this and we'll run it. Build succeeded and we get base class param constructor, derived class default constructor. So we're in that same order of base class and then derived class. But this time we're having our default constructor of the derived class explicitly call the parameterized constructor of the base class. And we don't really have a choice in this situation because there is no default constructor of the base class. And finally, one thing that's been added to C++ recently is the ability of the derived class to actually inherit constructors of the base class. Let's see how that works. If here we say using menu item colon colon menu item, what this is going to do is inherit all the constructors of menu item, however many there are. In this case here, we only have one. Let's try to create a drink object now. We're gonna to try to use this constructor by providing a string argument. So we'll say drink hot chocolate, and then here we'll say hot chocolate. And if we save this and run it, we now only get the base class param constructor running. No derive class constructor runs because we actually inherited the base class constructor and we're using it here to create a drive class object. So that's a neat ability that's been added into C++ recently. It might be useful in situations where you have many constructors defined in your base class, but no need for new constructors in your drive class, for example. And this has been the basics of constructors and how they work with inheritance in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.